in every drop of water. We are not able to w e d like to tell you some stories. Stories about water. Children died from drinking. Eight years ago, we were squatters. It was like a swamp. The poles of our houses were submerged in water. There were no toilets. People defecated anywhere. Millions of people live in squalid conditions like these in cities across Asia. Cities generate opportunities for their residents. That is part of their attraction, but they also create expectations which often cannot be met. The rapid increase in urban population has overwhelmed essential infrastructure. It seems impossible to keep pace with demand for new construction and maintenance. City residents, especially the poor, face daily hardships trying to meet their basic needs, and for many, clean water is inaccessible. This is the story of one urban poor neighbourhood that is starkly different: a community of former squatters who now have a clean water supply, tidy homes, and healthy children. The southern Philippine island of Negros, and its principal city, Bacolod. On a patch of vacant land in the city suburbs near the shore, are two poor communities side by side. Riverside is a typical squatter area, built on low-lying swampy land, with toilets hanging over the stagnant pools surrounding the rickety homes. Right next to Riverside is another community, Tinagong Paraiso, or Hidden Paradise, also built on swampy land. The contrast is very striking. The residents of Hidden Paradise are former squatters who obtained title to the land, fixed up their homes, and installed a clean water supply through patience, ingenuity, organisation, and sheer gall. <laughs> Dionisio de la Cruz is a community leader and president of the residents' association. Before we set up our new water system, we had a big health problem. People were getting sick a lot. The water from shallow wells was not really safe for drinking. They had stomach problems like amoebiasis. This was due to unsafe drinking water. This shallow well was everyone's source of water. Now that we are organized and settled, we have the strength to manage the projects that we decide to do together. So we were able to set up a safer water system than this well here. The island of Negros is the sugarcane capital of the Philippines, and much of the island is farmed by a large labor force of sugar workers on estates owned by a sugar aristocracy. In recent years, the sugar industry has been in rapid decline, hitting the island's economy hard and causing widespread unemployment. 
With a new influx of unemployed migrants streaming to Bacolod, the impact was felt in the poor neighbourhoods of the city. As jobs became scarce, life was even more difficult. Elvira Batarilan is a long-time resident of Hidden Paradise. In the past, this neighborhood was very, very poor. We didn't even have such basic and essential things like clean water and toilets. This was a very depressed area. We felt helpless. The wasteland near the coast on the edge of town had long been occupied by squatters attracted to Bacolod by the casual work available on the local wharves or among the fishing fleets based here. At least 90% of our members are very poor. Some work as stevedores at the pier. Others sell foodstuff. Others work as drivers of tricycles, pedicabs and jeepneys. Only a few work as salaried employees. Jimmy Artis lives in Hidden Paradise. Every day he turns up at the Bacolod Wharf and bids for work as a stevedore, loading and unloading ferries and coastal traders that ply the waters between Negros and adjacent islands. It's tough work when he gets it. But Jimmy doesn't get work every day. People mainly work for wages. Others are fishermen. Some can afford to set up fish pens. They stay out and fish the whole night. When the residents of Hidden Paradise first settled in the area years ago, they were squatters on land belonging to a prominent local landowner. As Becolod expanded, the area became attractive for development. The landowner entered into negotiations with a company that wanted to build a supermarket. The problem was that several hundred squatter families were living on the land. If the deal were to proceed, they would have to be evicted. For Dionisio and his community, the eviction order was the turning point. What we did was organize ourselves, group together, so we could negotiate with the landowner. Their lawyer came and told us that the owner wanted us to leave the place. But our position was to negotiate for a better relocation site. My father did the negotiation with them, actually, and uh, he had difficult times. <laughs> he had a share of the difficult moments, I'm sure, where uh, some of them, some of the occupants, just uh, refused to vacate, even with a court order. They were given some compensation for them to move their houses so that they can move their things, not their belongings and everything. But some people just refused. And uh, my dad had a hard time and uh, had in some point ordered the police to help no, in, the, in the eviction. Of our biggest problem was that not all of us believed that we could get our own land. Because here in Bacolod, the process of acquiring land is very difficult and complicated. Some of us did not believe that we could succeed. We had disagreements, quarrels, and bad feelings. We felt bad that some people decided not to join us. Despite these rifts, the squatters group held their ground knowing that the landowner would have to compromise to save the deal. When we sat down for the negotiations with their lawyer, we demanded that we be allowed to stay in the area. The owner relented and gave us a portion of his land. The residence group had prevailed and they obtained title to a small corner of the land, which they divided by lot among the families. For a few families who were better off, like Elvira's, 
This actually meant downsizing to the communal 50 square meter plot. But given the chance to own their own land, everyone was happy to comply. The residence group then turned their attention to the next apparently impossible task, getting a clean water supply from the Bacolod City Water Authority, Basiwa. When we first came here, our primary need was water. Our main source before was a shallow well and an artesian well pump. During our second general assembly, we identified drinking water as a priority need. But the problem was that if we wanted to access potable water from Basiwa, each family would need to spend 8 to 10,000 pesos to get a connection. The cost is too high for any single family to shoulder. For this reason, we decided to look for an organization willing to lend us enough money so we could set up a common water source. Water is really important for us. Before they could get a water connection, the community would have to take a big risk, borrow money to finance construction of water supply infrastructure. The Residents Association obtained a loan from a local NGO to install pipes and tap stands, and then applied to the city water utility for a community connection. The problem was, the utility would only make connections to individual households, which Hidden Paradise residents could not afford. Against the odds, they succeeded in reaching an agreement for their community connection. And that was not all they achieved. The utility agreed to charge the basic household tariff rather than the higher rate for larger consumers of water. Uh, this is Basiva, Pakolod City Water District. They are providing our water, and every month I come here to pay our water bill. We applied as an association, and they approved it. And now we are their clients and members of Basiwa. At first, it seemed unbelievable because previous organizations here in Bunago who applied did not pay their bills, but in the end, we were able to get their approval. It has been nine months since then, and we even get rebates because we pay on time. The water connection has made it easier for us because water is one of the most important human needs. It would be even better if every household has access to piped water. But right now, we are not able to have a connection for every house. We cannot afford that yet. We just don't have the money. With the community water connection, Hidden Paradise families now spend much less on water than before when they had to buy drinking water from private vendors. Before, we bought potable water from local water providers. Individuals who had water connections from Basiwa, we paid around 2 pesos to 2 peso 50 per container. Now we only pay 1 peso 50 per container. That's a significant saving on the income of each member. We now have a safe source of drinking water and we are not worried anymore about waterborne diseases. In our estimate, each family consumes five containers per day. They use one for drinking and about four containers for dishwashing, laundry, and bathing. The benefits of access to clean water at Hidden Paradise were nothing short of amazing, achieved as a result of the strength and unity of the residents' organization and their ability to self-manage.
An innovative system was introduced to pay for the best Siwa water and save enough to make other improvements in the community. Our system is like this. The water buyer purchases a token worth one peso fifty from the store. Then he puts the token in the box here. They open the faucet, fill the container, and when it's filled up, they take it home. I do not know how other communities handle their water sales. In our case, we just want to avoid temptation to mishandle cash. The water tender does not handle cash, only tokens. The cash goes directly to the collector, and every night we collect all the tokens and the cash. Our water pipe from outside finishes here. This is the end of it. So if these pipes are left without maintenance, the water turns murky and dirty, especially at the end of the pipe. So what we do is open the end to bleed the pipe so the dirt will come out. The result is clear, clean water for a month, and we do it every month. Their success in obtaining a clean water supply motivated the community to tackle the next problem, the lack of proper sanitation and drainage. As they built and improved their homes, families installed sanitary toilets with septic tanks. They concreted muddy laneways and installed gutters throughout the maze of narrow public walkways. In, in the drainage system, this drainage system should have been the responsibility of the local government. But we are the ones who found the money for this. We had these gutters made and paid for them with the money we gathered from our fundraising projects. Hidden Paradise is still a humble neighborhood by any standards. But the improvements there are dramatic when measured against conditions in the neighboring Riverside community. Riverside is like Hidden Paradise was eight years ago. Here, people still live in abysmal, unhealthy conditions, their homes and laneways submerged in stagnant, polluted water from the constant flooding. Hanging toilets drain directly into the stagnant pools. Behind sila, lain sila. We still have stagnant water and garbage where the tide flows in. We're behind compared to them. They're different from us, and their place is cleaner compared to ours. All this garbage is brought in by the tide. The water stays just like this. It cannot flow back anymore and becomes stagnant. Unlike Hidden Paradise, the land of Riverside belongs to the Bacolod city government. The city has been under heavy pressure to develop it for upmarket subdivisions, now spreading along the coastal tract. The presence of squatters was an embarrassment. Land developers screened slum areas from the eyes of new residents with high concrete walls and steel gates. Michael Velasquez is 10 years old and goes to elementary school. His father is a house painter. His mother does laundry. Every day before school, he fetches laundry water for his mother and grandmother. They pay dearly for water from someone with a private connection, and Michael must carry it home. There are no guarantees about improvements for squatter communities like Riverside, and it's quite possible that Michael could still be doing this by the time he's old enough to raise children of his own behind these walls. It's difficult to instill values in all the people. It is difficult for us to unite in our values because of the situation. The government knows about our difficulties, but they have not helped us yet. We do not want to be squatters all our lives. Many factors affect how small communities manage themselves and gain access to clean water. But for Hidden Paradise, the ability to organize effectively clearly gave them an advantage. 
we were able to do something good about the state of our water supply. And we made sure that we were thorough about the work in our organization. We hold regular meetings of our association. We talk about how important water is to the people and how having clean water can really improve our lives. I fought for this together with the other members. This was not just given to us. We had to fight for it. Elvira and Norma are long-time friends. Norma would like the Riverside community to follow the example of Hidden Paradise and improve conditions there. But so far, it's only a dream. The way we understand it, our livelihood and the livelihood at Riverside is no different. It's the same. The origin and culture and the nature of the livelihood is the same. I think if a person is secure in his dwelling place, if he does not have to worry whether he will be asked to leave any day, the mind of that person would be able to concentrate more on how to improve his surroundings and focus on making a living. Life is much richer now for the residents of Hidden Paradise. Many things have contributed to their remarkable achievements. They were able to organize and to remain united as a community. From being squatters, they were able to negotiate and become owners of the land. And they had the confidence to borrow the money needed to put in the vital water infrastructure. These are lessons for poor urban communities everywhere. It is very important what has happened to us. The level that we have reached and the gains that we have made are all because we organize ourselves. We believe that our experience can help others.